This is the Metuchen High School Podcast, the online radio voice of NHS. 159 to go. It's a three-point game. Barnett over two. Parcells. Here comes Cassidy to the basket. Puts it up. No good. Rebound Sam Anton. Metuchen's dealt with a plethora of injuries in this game. Here comes Chase Claybon. Claybon to tie. In and out. Rebound Anton the putback. No. Rebound Malay. Side, Walters. No. Fighting for the ball is Malay. Emotions running back on the court right now. A minute and 20 seconds to go. Cassidy with Clavon all over. The touch is led by as many as 14. 108 to go. They're going to have to foul soon, and Clavon is going to foul Cassidy. Josh, it's just been amazing the turn of events in this game. Yeah, the Nolan is just refusing to go down. They're going down, kicking and screaming, and they're getting back up on their feet. They're leading and freeing this game right now with very little time left. It's going to be crunch time for the touching right now. Malik trying to, I don't know if they're going to, yep, Clavon's going to pick up another. That might be four fouls on Clavon, so they might not want her to foul, so they don't lose her shooting ability here at the end. So we are down to 58 seconds on the clock. Still, I believe, two more fouls before the bonus. So we're gonna have to foul soon. Uh, Bridget O'Connor couldn't foul. Malague's got a foul. 53 seconds on the clock. She's gonna be the game of attrition here. I think Janelle is just gonna continue to hold them up for as long as they can, just forcing the touch on the clock. And there's very little Matudgeon's going to be able to do about it. Here comes, inside. Cassidy, that's going to be a foul, and I believe now that will send Chloe Cassidy to the line. 46.2 on the clock. Matudgeon scored the first 13 points of this game. Since then, it's been 52-36 to Nellon. If Cassidy scores he, both of her free throws here, forget about it. First one falls, it's a four-point game. And now Coach Glutz is going to call her timeout. 46 seconds on the clock. Just definitely a performance we didn't really expect from this Danellan team, especially with what we saw early in the game. Yeah, they really did a complete 180 during this game. They were kind of they were kind of flat-footed, came out probably off guard, a bit tired, not really in it mentally all the time. But now they're really starting to show what they can do against this Matuchin team, who's been in control pretty much the entire game up until the last few minutes when they took it from them. And I think that comes down to a lot of things. It comes down to complacency, it comes down to personal fitness, it comes down to confidence. Because this Matuchin team, you know, they're a bit tired, they've been plagued by injury, they probably got a bit comfortable with their lead, and that's come back to haunt them. And all those little mistakes they've made. Just come back to home as well, you know, leaving the guy, leaving the girl open, <laughs> the finish shots. It's just they're dying of a thousand cuts over here. Yeah, it's not giant, giant glaring issues or just huge runs they're gonna have. It's just little mistakes that are just eating away at them little by little. And that's what happens to a lot of their games. They're really good up until the last few minutes and then those those little issues just burst wide open to make them lose. Well, Clavon has been shaken up a couple times. Noel Eat is still in the locker room as Cassidy backs down the three. 22 points. She only had four in the first half, 18 in the second half. Three pointer Malay. No, that would have been huge. And then we've got the pair of cells, and they're sitting here to run. 34 seconds on the clock. If she can knock down these free throws, that might be about all she wrote here. 54-49 the score. Comeback's going to be pretty much impossible for this one touch of game. She doesn't even know what happened with these free throws to the game of the They're up five points already with 34 seconds left. There's, there's really no coming back in this one touch of game, I hate to say it. And it doesn't seem like that's their goal either. As Molly Malay, who's led the team with 20 points, goes to the bench. <laughs> Free throw is out, Anton the rebound, 32 seconds. Claybon takes it. I imagine a Claybon three here if she can get open. She's gonna take a wild one from way downtown. That's not gonna fall, 24 seconds. Uh, we're seeing that three-point game falling apart here. They're getting desperate. 
desperate, they're getting sloppy, they're just trying to get anything done at this point. And that's what happens, they just, they just airball it. You know, usually they won't be super comfortable taking those long range threes, but right now, it's not working. Yep, not at all. So 54, 49, 23 seconds on the clock. Cassidy knocks down the free throw. Lucky bounces there to make it a six point game. Six points on the line for Corey Cassidy. And those six points are big. It's a six point lead. Each knocks down the seventh, and it's a seven point lead. 23 seconds. Don't you try to jump something up. It's going to be the touch and ball with five seconds in the Could they get the final basket in here? Yeah, they could, they'd love to make it a slightly closer game. Every point counts. So, off the inbound, Clavon chucks one up, no. Jordan Perez under the basket, no. And that's going to be it. 56 40 on. The Mellon comes back and down. At one, at one point in the game, they had a 16-point lead on this Denon team. This is pretty much inexcusable right here. They should have had this game in the back. They were dominant for the whole game up to the final minutes, and then they just, it seems like they just choked. And this this has happened a lot, both the boys and the girls teams here. They just they just struggle closing out games, and that's one of the fatal flaws of this in touching that they're definitely going to have to address this season and maybe into next season if it doesn't if it flies on the radar. Well, now five and seven for Benelli, three and five in conference, and the touching falls to three and nine, a one and seven conference record. It's about all the time we have. Apologize for technical difficulties, but we hope you enjoyed these clear final minutes. I'm Eddie Collette. And I'm Josh Hines. And this is the Touch High School Podcast, the online radio voice of NHL.